It's uh, it's me, sweetheart. Frank. Hi, baby. It's good to see you. You turned mm. up so early, mm. huh? Something happened at the new job? Well, you know, I got this job when they thought they were expanding, and well, I guess things didn't turn out the way they expected, and so now they're cutting back. Oh, so what you're saying is that they? Uh... Yeah, that's right. They got laid off. Danny, I'm not in the mood for games tonight. I... Yeah, I know. I know. You want to get to the bank for the check. I know. Oh. What did you do? Did you win the lottery and you're keeping it a secret? Uh, 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 it's something personal. Well, Buzz, you know something? The bank will close itself tomorrow morning anyway. And even if you use the machine, nobody's going to see it till then. So just lighten up. So where are we? I, uh, um, some old motel room. No, not just some old motel room. This is the last place where we made love. Well, there's always a chance that Kat was lying when she said that David ran off to Sacramento. Yeah, and if he was in Bauer's car, he would have gotten busted before he left the city. Look, could we not talk about this anymore tonight? All I want to do is have a snack, collapse by the TV with you until we fall asleep, which would be in about five minutes. Where the hell are my keys? I've got mine. Hey, you know what? If you're right, if David is still in town, then we do have to worry about Joe Morrison finding him first. Even Joe has to take a break sometime. Please don't move! Oh, you seen anything suspicious out here? Yeah, it depends on what you call suspicious. Well, why don't you tell me? Well, sometimes I hear these strange footsteps. It usually turns out to be hunters or poachers or even hikers coming across my property. Of course, I haven't seen any of them lately, but... I guess what you really want to know is have I seen David Grant? So why don't you talk to Bridget? Uh, just don't make it too late, okay? Okay, Daddy. <sighs> Sugar, you did the right thing tonight. And maybe it'll take you a while to believe that, but you really did do the right thing. Believe me, okay? And I won't forget what you did. Giving Kat the good advice to go to the police in the first place. It makes a full lot in my book. Thank you. Well, you're welcome. All right. Good night. Good night. Uh, I don't want you driving home too late, okay? Yeah, I'll, I'll be heading out soon. All right, see ya. Good night. Good night. Okay. I did what you said. I pretended to confess. I just hope that this helps David get away. You have the same name as the guy that died, officer? Yeah, I was Vinny's uncle, his father's brother. So you could say that I have a personal interest in seeing David Grant brought to justice. It's been rough this past couple of weeks watching his mother go through hell and not being able to say to her that at least we found your son's killer. That's the only consolation I can give to her now. Well, you know, I knew Vinny. I had a few run-ins with him. 
You know, he actually attacked a girl, a friend of mine, in the woods near here. He tried to rip her clothes off. Then he had his problems. Nobody is denying that. But he was still just a kid. Uh, if he'd have lived, he could have got some help, had a chance to straighten himself out. Yeah. If he'd let anybody help him get straightened out. What are you saying? That he deserved to die? No, sir. I never thought that. Good. Because I knew him all his life. I used to take him fishing when he was half as high as the pole. We were close then, and then he grew up, something happened, he turned wild. But he never deserved to die in some back alley with a knife in his gut. Now, you know this David Grant has killed a man before. You know, Fifth Street used to be a good neighborhood until his kind moved in and started making problems for the rest of us. His kind? Look, I have nothing against them as long as they stay where they belong. I got you. Hi, I haven't seen David Grant. I don't know where he is. And you're sure about that? Yeah, I'm sure. Well, I heard that you knew him. Well, then you heard that he and I never had much use for each other. Well, if you see any sign of him, just call. Ask for me, Joe Morrison. Yes, sir. Now, you know that anybody that helps this kid out is going to end up regretting it. Scramble up some eggs. You want some? Oh, I'm so sorry, you guys. I didn't know anybody was here. Yeah, you know us cops never off duty, even our own pads. Just a little mistake. Uh, no, very funny, Harley. Well, we didn't know if it was supposed to be dinner or a midnight snack. What? <clears throat> oh, no, I'm sorry. We were supposed to celebrate their engagement tonight, and you forgot, too. I, for I never even knew we actually made a date. I didn't tell you? Mm -hmm. I thought for sure I must have told you. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I'm sorry. I feel terrible. The only excuse we have is that we're up to our ears in David Grant's investigation. Oh, anything new? I haven't found him yet, but we're not going to talk about that anymore tonight. Right, sweetheart? Right, sweetheart. Anyway, why don't you let us make it up to you? How about tomorrow night? Great. Except I can't. I'm going out of town. Lewis Construction Business. Ooh. Yeah, this is Dylan's first trip as a VIP. <laughs> He's going to save the company thousands and thousands of dollars. Yeah, if I can cut the deals. You will. You know you will. You should see how everybody looks up to him. They love working with him. She never lets me get the mistakes out. <laughs> Looks like you got a fan, Dylan. You might as well relax and enjoy it. Oh, speaking of uh, enjoying things, isn't there something that you wanted to tell your sister? She enjoys her new boyfriend? No, besides <laughs> that. We were planning on uh, telling you, actually, it's not your big engagement soiree. What? What are you guys talking about? Uh, your wedding gift. Harley thinks we ought to tell you what we decided. Thanks to the lovely support of my lovely fiance, mm -hmm. we want to pay for your wedding. Frank, there are other jobs. And there are other people out there, and when they hire you, they're going to feel like they've hired somebody worth gold. Yeah, well, I wish I could turn some of that gold into some pure cash. Hey, what are you doing up so late, anyway? Oh, actually, Marina and I just got back. Oh, what are my cute girls doing about visiting some friends? <laughs> no, actually, I decided to go back to the diner. It's good for Stavros. Keep him company, and Marina cheers him up. No, oh, hold on here. You didn't do the cleanup all by yourself, did you? Frankie, it's not a big deal. You were at the diner since 8 this morning until 10 or 11 o'clock tonight? Well, yeah, but uh, Frank, I am young, I'm healthy, I enjoy doing this. It's fun. The time passes quickly when we are busy and Marina gets to stay with me the whole time. Yeah, I mean, that's just the point, though. I mean, she's always inside. I mean, she never gets a chance to go to the park. I mean, to, to play in the grass and ride on the swing. I mean, the only time we're together is, is when we're, we're all together in that stupid diner. Hey, that is more time than most families have. I know, but that's no way to live. Oh, okay, well, if you can't make me a frozen strawberry daiquiri, um, just send over two beers, all right? Yeah, and send in a bag of chips with that, okay? Thanks. 
What? You don't want a beer? No, 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 no. I, yeah, have the beer. But right now, I'm more interested in why you brought me here. Well, I saw the name, Sweet Dreams Motel, in the phone book, and it just filled me with nostalgia, and I thought maybe you would like some of this. Oh, uh, honey, listen, I, 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 I've i been up to my eyes in nostalgia ever since I got here. I'm sort of all nostalgia out, you know? Yeah, but, Buzz, this isn't like the stupor you used to sit with the guys or the sandlot where you played softball. This is the room that we came to the night before you went back to Vietnam, before you enlisted again. Don't you remember we wanted someplace really special and, and quiet where we could be alone? And so we left Frankie with Pops and we snuck out of the house like two teenagers. Don't you remember? Yeah. Yeah, I, I remember. And you know, on, uh, on another night, I, I'd probably want to reminisce about the past with you. But right now, I'm sort of, you know, 100% in the present. Well, I guess I always did have lousy timing. Um, okay, well, let's clear out. We'll go over oh, to no, Frankie. Oh, no, come on. Look, no, you went to all the trouble to get this place. Let's, let's at least have the beers, okay? Okay. All right. Well, Buzz, there was actually yeah. another reason why I wanted to bring you here. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to find someplace quiet where we could talk about your life. My life? Yeah. Well, I, I see I read this article in Cosmo about, about middle-aged men. Not that you look huh? middle-aged. No, you look great. You look great. Of course, well, you have had the benefit of plastic what, surgery, what, but... What, what are you talking about? Buzz. Huh? You're going through a midlife crisis. Huh? I saw you with Jenna tonight. I saw what happened. Well, what do you mean? Well, well it, it's clear that you wanted something from her that she is not willing to give. Uh-huh. A relationship. Uh-huh. And Buzz... When something is over, it's over. And you're only fooling yourself if you think that it's not. Believe me, I know, because, hey, I fooled myself for years with Billy, so I sympathize with you completely. Oh, I didn't need your sympathy. Your sympathy's wasted with me. I figured out a long time ago that brooding over what's gone is, is just, it gets you nowhere, you know? I'm, I'm in the beginnings now. And so I'd appreciate it if you stopped giving me endings. I, Jenna Bradshaw is not a long-lost love. She's a whim that didn't pan out. And this is not a shrine to the end of, of Buzz and Nadine. This is a slightly seedy motel room. This will never be a slightly seedy motel room to me. And not just because this is the last place where we were. You see, something wonderful got started here, Buzz. This is the place where we made Harley. Maybe this will mean that they'll let up on the search firm here in town. Oh, Bridget, I hope so, because right now, David needs some breathing space. The only thing I'm worried about is they're not giving any information as to where I am and if I'm okay, so David's not going to know one way or the other. Didn't you guys talk about this before you went to the roadhouse, about what had happened if you got caught? Yes, we did. But I had no idea that the police would handle it this way, like luring David in by keeping the fact that I'm home a secret. Tell me where he is, and I'll tell him that you're okay. No. Bridget, I've come up with a better idea. You're going to help me run away from here tonight. We'll continue with part two of Guiding Light in a moment. I don't get it, Buzz. You said you were sick of sad endings, so I tell you about a happy beginning, and, and you look at me like I killed your best friend. Luckily, I don't have a best friend. Well, I thought that you would be touched to find out where Harley oh. was conceived. Don't you remember? You, you forgot to bring your condoms in. I didn't, I didn't have any... Ah, come on! Look, you were wrong. I'm not touched. So forget about it. Leave it alone. Oh, no, come on. You do this every time. Every time I said enough and drew the line, they open up the faucets and I back down. It's not going to happen this time. What did I do? Huh? What did I do? I don't oh, understand. Are you really you wondering how something that happened 20 years ago? I want to know why finding out where your daughter was conceived is having such a terrible effect on you. I swore to myself I wouldn't do this. But you asked for it, and now you're going to get it. You pushed, and now you're going to find out. You want to know what it is? The answer is two words. Louis Bevilacqua. <laughs> Louis? Tell me. There's nothing to tell. Louie, uh, he used to come in the diner. He used to joke and kid around a lot. 
I know Pops didn't have much use for him. What, did Pops tell you something about Louie? When I got back from my first tour of duty, Pops was acting kind of funny. Every time Louie's name came up or Louie came into a room, Pops acted weird, so I, I finally got him to tell me what he was worried about. And he thought that you and Louie were having an affair. He was worried about it, didn't know what to do. Well, I mean, it didn't come exactly as a shock to me. I mean, you and I hadn't been getting along. And, you know, most of the guys found out that their, uh, their wives were having affairs. While they were over there, uh, either they just freaked out or they felt relieved because they were doing the same thing, you know. So, I re-enlisted. And when I was over in Nam, you wrote me and told me that you were expecting. And I always wondered about the timing of the pregnancy. It's not an obligation, Dylan. It's, it's more of a privilege. I'd be grateful if you let me do this for my sister. It'd mean a lot to me. Yeah, but what about your own wedding? Oh, that's certain as the sun rising in the east. Uh-uh. Are you going to have to put it off? This fall, Harley will be Mr. Mallet, or I'll be Mr. Cooper. We haven't decided yet which. But seriously, everything's under control. <laughs> well, then we accept with hey, thanks. Good. Great. Now well, that that's settled, I'm going to say something I probably shouldn't say. Glad it's you, Dylan, because if Julie was standing here with heart chest up, I'd have a tough time hiding my Don't do happiness. That. No, no. It's not. okay. He's right. I've been an idiot. So look, I promise you, I see heart for how he really is now. Well, let's stop talking about heart and party. <laughs> yeah. Dylan, come help me put something together in the kitchen. Okay. I'll be like, Once you get to know each other. Uh-huh. I'm just going to tell him how much I love you. <laughs> you know what people talk about being so happy you could burst? Hmm. We'll do it after the wedding. I don't know if we can get back together in time. Tony, I feel so safe. Like I've never felt before. I've got all the people I love around me, and everybody takes such good care of me. Oh, baby, that's what it's all about. Well, you know, I've learned a lot from watching you and Harley. Yeah. What we have is pretty great, I have to admit. It's more than I ever dreamed. But I'm glad you haven't been watching us this past week, because we've been squabbling. Yeah, what about? It's Harley's newer at being a cop than I am, and she's going into this like she does everything else in her life, 150%. And in this line of work, you can't do that for long. Or you'll burn out and might even kill you. Well, she doesn't look like a cop right now. No. Maybe she's learning. Dylan? What? I want you to be completely honest with me. Do you have any idea where David Grant is? No. And I'm glad because I wouldn't want to lie to you, Harley. Well, I'm glad you wouldn't lie to me. As long as he's a fugitive, he's going to get in more and more trouble. It's very important that we find him. <laughs> that was my last official act of the evening. I am now completely wiping this case from my mind. Look. Woo! I can't remember anything now. What case? Honey? You can stay mad at you. Dylan. I know, I can't. Uh, well, it looks like we gotta go. If you guys don't mind. And it doesn't look like you do, so... Thanks again. <laughs> hey, I really appreciate it. Bye, my guys. pleasure, okay. totally. Hey, let's be sure to reschedule this night for uh, when you get back from your business yeah, date. Yeah, okay. definitely. Good night, you guys. You be nice to each other. <laughs> Open doors much? <laughs> You heard her. Oh, I can't wait. Oh, Frankie, you did not make me give up anything. Laney, I never questioned that I wouldn't be able to take care of you and our family. I mean, to keep you safe from harm. I mean, to give you the things in life that make life sweet. Like being able to have time with you and Marina away from the diner. Not to be hounded by bill collectors and to be able to buy my daughter a brand new christening dress if I wanted to. I know, I know why you made Marina's christening dress. It's because we couldn't afford a new one. Just like we can't afford to replace all the equipment in the diner when it got trashed. Oh, Laney, I, I never thought that, that the luck would just stay this way. I mean, everything always changes and switches around, right? I mean, it never occurred to me that if you 
Marina needed anything, that I wouldn't be able to give it to you. And now that our daughter needs this operation, I can't even come up with the money. I have been living in some kind of dream world. It's about time I woke up. Oh, Frank, stop. Stop this. Do not give up hope, Frank. We have each other. We are going to get through this. You don't have to wake up from anything. Yeah, everything's gonna be okay. Everything's gonna be fine. It is. It is. Look, I just, I'm tired, and, I, and I'm sure you must be exhausted, so, I mean, why, why don't you go upstairs to bed, and I'll be right up, okay? I love you. that we will not be able to comply with your request for a second mortgage at this time. Bridget, listen, I really need to get to David, okay? He's probably worried sick about me by now. Now, I'm afraid that he's going to do something desperate to get to me. So he'll end up getting caught or, or something worse could even happen. I have a much simpler plan. Tell me where he is or tell him you're fine. Bridget, no, because then that's going to get you in trouble. See, if you do it my way, it's more like a prank. So if they catch you, they really can't do anything. Because to you. your father will have already done it to me, Kat. I mean, you're not thinking clearly right now. I'm really sorry, but I, I can't help you do this. Cat! Cat! No! Oh. Don't blink, Jack. You are not the man in charge, and you're not going to be. And don't look away. I know what I want, and I'm not afraid to fight for it. You opened fire. What the hell did you think you were doing putting your eyes in the paper? But Brad dropped a bomb. This is not over yet, pretty boy. Now the war is on. Captain, Bridget, no! No, come on. I no, need to go and sleep. What's going on here? Will you stop? You stop. Daddy, stop! I'm not going to be held prisoner in this house. I wanted to trust you again. Bridget, thank you for trying to stop Kat, but I think you ought to go now, okay? I'm sorry. Please don't hate me. I think that you need to leave like my father just said. Baby, I, I thought we had some understanding here. I, I thought you understood how serious all of this was, but nothing seems to matter to you but that boy. Not your home, not your friends, not me. You willing to throw your whole life away for a criminal? I mean, a fugitive on the run, somebody who's wanted for murder? Cat baby, don't you get it? There's a police car downstairs on duty. You are under surveillance. You could go to jail. You are in my custody. I'm responsible for you by court order. When are you going to start showing some responsibility for yourself? It'll be all right. It's going to be all right, baby. It'll be okay. When's the last time you ate? Hmm. I don't remember. Yesterday, a couple of days ago, it's all running together. Look, thanks for the eggs. And, uh, what you did for me covering with that cop. Why'd you do it, Hart? I didn't like his attitude. Is that it? Well, self... Preservation, too. I mean, I don't know he's not going to haul me in for aiding and abetting. I don't have that much faith in the system, either. Plus, Bridget to have my high for it. <laughs> you look like you could sure hold your own when she came over here to tell you how scared she was for me and Kat. Kat and I were the brats you almost caught over in the barn. 
From what we heard, you were dead set on turning me in if you ever got the oh, chance. I tell you, you're damn lucky I didn't know where you were then. <clears throat> yeah. Well, I wondered where you and Bridget went off to that day. Yeah, she got in a lot of trouble trying to explain what happened to her uncle's car and the money that she borrowed from Billy Lewis. What'd she tell him? She said that the keys she must have left in the ignition, some that he just drove off. What with. about the money? I said I needed the money for farm supplies and equipment. You came through for her. What, do you think I just let her twist in the wind? Wouldn't surprise me. <sighs> yeah, well, it's no skin off my nose. Bridget's been a good friend to me. Yep, she has. But I'm not the one to tell you how good. So look, I'm gonna scram so uh, people won't show up on your farm looking for me. Maybe I'll see you sometime. So for all these years, you thought that, that Harley might have been Louie's daughter? I tried not to think of it. Why didn't you just come out and ask me? Because you were already saying that she was my daughter. Buzz, I was saying it because it was true. Okay, so Louie liked to flirt, but you know my husband was away. And I, there I was raising, raising Frankie all by myself. And I was still young and cute, and, and I needed somebody to tell me that I was still attractive. So when Louie said that I could come over and, and have a few games of pool on the house, I went over there a few times after work. Okay, more than a few times. And I, I did have fun. It, for a few hours, he made me forget. But that's as far as it went, Buzz. I never even let him walk me home. I was never unfaithful to you. I was never unfaithful to you, not even once. What difference does it make now? What difference does it make? It makes a hell of a lot of difference to me, Buzz. I loved you, damn it. Don't ever say anything to Harley about this. Okay? You could have used this as an excuse when you came back to the kids. You could have used this against me for not coming back. Why didn't you? Well, I was trying to make amends, mend fences. <laughs> Turning Harley's world upside down was hardly the way to do it. Well, what, what, do you believe what I said? Yes. Why? Why? Yeah. I don't know. What can I say? It has the ring of truth. Well, I have lied a lot in my life, so how do you know I'm not lying now, hmm? Even if it isn't true, Harley's my kid, just as much as Frank. Even if it isn't true? You know, the funny thing is, I don't even know why I should have stayed faithful to you. I was pretty sure that you weren't returning the compliment. And I was so scared and so lonely that I could have used some of the comfort that we were giving me. Where are you going? Yeah. Okay now. What do you think I did in there, Buzz? Take a happy pill? I am upset. Harley was like you. How do you mean? I don't know, Harley. It, it was always so loud and funny, and there was never any doubt in your mind what her feelings were. If she didn't like something, she let you know right away. <laughs> and and the louder and more rambunctious she got, the more people just loved her, just, just like you. <laughs> when Harley wanted something. She let nothing stop her. I remember this one time. 
I think she was about, oh, six years old. And she decided that she wanted, she wanted a horse. So somehow she got herself out to this pasture and she, she picked out this, this tired old nag and I, I, she just adopted it. And when we found her, she was walking back down the road into town. She was leading this, this poor animal. Harley really thought she was going to keep the horse in the diner, in the, in the alleyway. Such a handful. What a character. Oh, Buzzy, I wish you could have seen her. She was so... <laughs> Years of feelings bottled up inside of you, but this is a safe place to let them out. Oh. What I have bottled up inside me is an irresistible tickle that's choking me. Oh. Well, maybe we should head back, huh? Hey, look, I'm beat. Since you paid for it, I'll spend the night here, okay? You can drive the vintage car home. It scares me. It scares me to think of it getting out of my sight, though. Hey, I got us here in one uh, a couple near misses. Just be careful, please. Okay. Okay. Good night, bud. Oh. Good Something I don't really feel like driving, especially an antique. Um, if you don't mind, maybe I'll just stick around here too. I... Hey, chair will be fine. Hey, suit yourself. Oh, I will. Hey, look. The longer I stayed away harder it was to come back, but the stronger the pull was, you know? I mean, it was like I was on the end of a giant rubber band, and Springfield was on the other end, and I knew every minute he was either gonna break or I was gonna snap me right back to where I came from, which is, of course, what happened, and I just, I, I couldn't imagine landing straight in the laps of all your lives, <laughs> like Mary Poppins with a two-year growth on my face, you know? So... I approached, you know, at an angle. I mean, that's so me, isn't it? An angle. But I was comfortable with that. I mean, that way I could, I could blackmail you for old time's sake, spy for old Rod, worm my way into Billy's business, and all the time keep my eyes on my kids. And that was great. I was very comfortable being somebody else. But then, poof. Something happened, it changed. Everybody found out suddenly I was in the spotlight. Held to account for all my sins. And then told that every single one of them was unforgivable. I don't know, at first I, I guess I thought I'd just hope for forgiveness. That I maybe I could wipe out all the sins, you know, just with a grand gesture or two or three. But I, I couldn't make up for what I did to you and Frank and Harley. I couldn't give those years back. I swear to you, I am always 
going to be there for their child. No matter what. I believe you, Bud. Jonesy? Hey, man. It's, uh, it's Frank Cooper. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, a long time no hear from, huh? Yeah, yeah, I've been doing fine. Yeah, I've been behaving myself. Yeah, yeah. Hey, um, listen, buddy, I've, uh, I've got a, a line on a, a job that I think you might be interested in. Um, yeah, an inside line. <laughs> yeah, I thought that might, uh, hook you. Are you coming? Listen, buddy, I gotta fill you in on the details tomorrow, okay? I'll call you back. Hey, who are you on the phone with this late? I, uh, I'm just, uh, calling work. I thought maybe I'd forgotten something, so... Well, I think it's time to go to bed. It's late. Yeah, sure. Um, suddenly I'm not tired anymore. <sighs> Me neither. Best time to go to bed. <laughs> okay. I'll meet you upstairs in one second. I just want to put away the... Perishables. Well, hurry up before I perish. Uh, David Grant. for the love of David, huh? I will never forgive you, boy. I will never forgive you for what you did to her. Oh, no. Hey, David, if you think you're going after Kat, that's a bad move. Thanks for the advice. If you really want to do us a favor, why don't you jumpstart Bridget's car for me? It's out in the barn. Oh, great. I guess I should be thankful you didn't even bring the body here, huh? Well, I can be thoughtful when I put my mind to it. So how about that jump? Bad idea, man. Cops know the license number. They know the idea of the car. You wouldn't make, make it two miles in that. Oh, great. We can't leave it here. What if Officer Morrison comes back? We're gonna have to take it somewhere. Nobody will find it. What do you mean, we? Well, I hope you're gonna help me since you're the one who put this mess in my lap. Yeah, I'll help you. Thanks. Come on, let's get it over with. Julie, I never thought I'd say no to you, but I can't fire Hart. <clears throat> Why? Because I can't dump a guy for something that has nothing to do with me and nothing to do with work. I mean, that's something his father would do. Fine. Get some sleep, Levy. I can't. You had no right to do that. 
You are treating me like a teenager. Is that the way you're acting? You know what? I take that back. You're acting like you were when you were searching for your father. Like a woman obsessed with one thing and one thing only. No, no that's not true. We, we had a really good night tonight with Julie and Dylan, and I, I was just making one last phone call before I was going to go up to you. So your priorities are all screwed up. It's the middle of the night, and you're worried about the case when I'm waiting in bed for you. Well, uh, forgive me for being a little human, okay? But I can't just turn my emotions on and off like an electronic device. Well, Carly, we're all human, okay? And we all have our cases we care about. But we're also husbands and wives, fathers and mothers, and about a hundred other things. And we got to learn to to let it go and balance our lives. Otherwise, we won't survive as cops. I am balancing all the time, and I do a very good job with it, thank you. But a friend of mine is out there. He is being hunted, and he needs my help. And you know what? He doesn't have the luxury of being able to turn that off at the end you know of the what? day. You know what? I think you need David Grant more than he needs you. Because you're lost without a cause. Any cause! If you really believe that about me, you can go to hell. Hey!